Today we're going to talk about a micronutrient that has big, big importance out in your field. It's copper. So some of the reasons why copper is so important is it's great for disease control. If you have good levels of copper, it seems like you have better disease tolerance overall in your plants. You should also have better test weight. Copper is important for lignin building, basically less lodging. You have a better stock quality when you have more copper in the plant. It's also very important for seed size. One interesting thing too is copper is the key to seed coat resiliency. If you have seed coats like on soybeans that are falling off, well your problem is most likely a lack of copper out there. A couple other things that I would add, copper as a foliar treatment can serve as a bactericide and even a fungicide. And finally, too much nitrogen and phosphorus can really limit copper uptake in plants. All right, now when you think about copper, you may say, wow, that's a lot of benefits. I didn't realize copper did all those things in plants. Yeah, it is really important no matter what crop you're raising, it's an essential element for your crop, but you need to get it out there early. And here's one of the things about micronutrients. If you've got a micronutrient that you're short in, this is one of the things that helps all the processes in your plant. Now, Brian mentioned several of them here, but those processes are happening all throughout the season. So I really like to see micronutrients out there early, whether that's in a strip-till band, whether that's in a two-by-two, two, something to get them close so early in the season your crop can access them. Just like most of the rest of the micronutrients, copper does not move very well inside plants. In other words, it's non-mobile or immobile in the plant. So if late in the season, your plant is short on copper, it's not gonna be able to rob it from the lower leaves. You're gonna see deficiency in those upper leaves. So you've gotta have good, ample availability of copper all season long. And this can be a little bit challenging too if you apply copper because copper doesn't move well in soil. What I'm saying here is if you lay copper on the soil surface in let's say a broadcast application, rainfall isn't going to move it in very easily, just like it doesn't move phosphorus or zinc down into the soil. You're actually going to have to place the copper where you want it, or certainly you could do a foliar treatment. Otherwise, you've got to do some tillage in that soil if you broadcast copper before the start of the season. I want to be a little cautious though about that foliar treatment you mentioned, Bram, because if you're putting out a high rate of copper foliar, you're probably going to see a negative response on your plants. You're going to see some burning. So if you're doing a foliar treatment, make sure those rates are low and make sure that it's a product that's been tested for foliar application. For example, if you're using a micronutrient blend like a Micro 500, no problem. We've done that at a quart or a couple of quarts foliar, no problem with burn. But if you're putting out a gallon or more of some copper products, I'd be a little bit nervous. What we're looking for a lot of times is good soil test levels. When you see that, then usually your plant has ample copper, at least in heavier soils. So our trigger point is generally on a Midwest Labs DTPA test, 1.4 to 2 parts per million on copper. That can really vary depending on what type of test you're running and which lab is running that test. But all I'm trying to say here is, if you're short in the soil, most likely you're going to end up short later on in the season. And to Darren's point, you can't just go applying enormously huge rates of copper foliar. So just work on building that soil test level up. It can be done very inexpensively with something like copper sulfate. Yeah, and the great part is you don't need much copper for each crop, so you probably aren't going to have to do this more than once or twice during your whole farming career. You do still need to keep checking for this and make sure you get that level up. But once you do, uh, you're going to be able to coast for a little while with just maintenance and removal type rates. Well, yeah, when Darren says once or twice in your farming career, he means big rates. You're still going to have to put on a little bit of copper kind of as you go, because just take a look at the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app, and you can see real quickly that every crop is going to remove some copper from the soil. So again, just make sure you are doing something about copper, monitoring your levels, keeping your levels good if you want to get all those benefits that copper can offer. Well, there are a lot of good things copper can do, Brian, but one thing it will not do is kill our weed of the week. So we'll have to show you some other ways, and we'll do that coming up later in the show.